Welcome into this week's edition of the Penn State Blitz. It's a special episode, not just because longtime Penn Live Penn State beat photographer Joe Hermit joins the show, but also because for the first time in weeks, we have real news to talk about. First down, we will cover what is going on with Penn State's returning All Americans thinking about opting out or not opting out of the 2020 season. We'll move on to second down, where we'll look at the first part of Penn State's 10 game Big Ten schedule that was released on Wednesday. Third down, we'll cover the second half of that schedule and fourth. Fourth down will bring us to the Penn State mailbag. It's the Penn State Blitz on Penn Live. All right, Joe Hermit, welcome back to the show. It's been a couple weeks or maybe even a month since you've been on, and I think the last time we talked, we were both kind of had mixed feelings on whether or not Penn State would not even have a season, let alone start on time. And as we sit here and record this Wednesday morning, Joe, we know not only when Penn State will start, but who it will play each week of this season. But first, let's get to the news of the week prior to Wednesday. Tuesday night, Yahoo Sports reports that Penn State held a team meeting and it cites sources who were in that meeting to say that star linebacker returning All-American Micah Parsons would opt out of the 2020 college football season and declare for the 2021 NFL Draft. Joe, Micah has not confirmed that as of the recording time of this, which is about 11 o'clock Wednesday morning. We're still waiting on word from him. It wouldn't be a huge surprise if he did opt out. A lot of likely first-round picks, which of course Micah is, are thinking about doing so because of the coronavirus pandemic, because of the uncertainty of how long this season will last and everything that comes with it. Joe, what was your first thought when you saw that Tuesday night? Um, actually, I, 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 I had seen earlier that uh, Minnesota wide receiver Rashad Bateman had, had, had declared, so I wasn't completely shocked, um, but surprised, you know, uh, disappointed, I guess, you know, if it is true. Um, I was really looking forward to, to, to watching Micah for for this upcoming season, I think he really came into his own the second half of last year, and that bowl game was just amazing. One of the best defensive performances that I've ever seen uh, covering Penn State in my 20 years, and that's a lot of really that encompasses a lot of really good defensive players. You know, I think you know Micah, but you know, I mean, it's really hard to fault him. You know, I mean, he he he's got a whole future ahead of him, and with with the uncertainty of everything that's going on. Um, you know, I'm sure it was a really tough decision if it is true. Um, but you know, it's, it's really hard to fault him and I'm sure, you know, he's not going to be the last either. You know, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of other guys around, uh, around college football that are going to follow suit. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Joe. I think that obviously anyone, whether they're a first-round pick, a second-round pick, or maybe a player who doesn't uh, have aspirations or hopes or the ability to play at the next level, is going to think about this uh, a lot. And just simply because of the fact that the Big Ten and every other conference has seemingly put every safety protocol and measure that they can think of in place and everything they're trying to do to keep these guys healthy, it's still going to be a challenge in a contact sport like football. So I agree with you. He wasn't the first, uh, Micah wasn't, to, um, you know, maybe opt out again. We're still waiting on official word from him. The Yahoo Sports report did kind of hedge a little bit and talk about uh, barring a last-minute change of heart, so we'll see what happens. But it won't be the, uh, you know, whether Micah does or doesn't, whatever he decides to do, uh, there's plenty of other guys, I think, that will follow suit in due time. One Penn State player who doesn't sound like he's going to do that, however, is another All-American returner, tight end. Pat Fryermuth, he shot down a tweet from a fan Wednesday morning suggesting he could be the next one to opt out. And Joe, I don't think that's a huge surprise. This is a guy who could have left for the NFL draft this past year um, because he was three years removed from high school at the end of the 2019 season, thanks to a prep year. But he decided to come back to school, made pretty clear that he wasn't ready to move on to the pros. And Joe, it wouldn't make any sense for that stance to change now, just a few months removed from making that initial decision. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Greg. Um, you know, he, he clearly, he clearly wants to have spend another year at Penn State. You know, he he he. Um, I mean, talent wise, it looks like he could. He's ready for the league, but uh, you know, personally, you know, he 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 made it abundantly clear um, that he really wants to return for for another year. 
Um, so yeah, so that I, I can't say that was a real big surprise. Either. No, I'm right there with you. We'll see what happens next. Obviously, Penn State set to start camp August seventh. So if anyone else is opting out, it's probably likely that they'll do so before then. Maybe they'll wait and see how things go the first couple days or maybe even the first week or two before deciding any further. But speaking of the start of camp, it is scheduled to start when it was supposed to, Friday, August 7th, so the end of this week. And that's because, Joe, Penn State is scheduled to start its season on time. So let's just do a quick recap. Kent State, Virginia Tech, San Jose State, all off the board now as the Big Ten has decided to play just a conference schedule. They add a 10th conference game to the original nine-game conference schedule released on Wednesday morning for the entire conference. Penn State opens up with Northwestern at Beaver Stadium on September 5th. They'll then travel to Indiana and Michigan on back-to-back weekends, September 12th and September 19th. Michigan State comes to State College in on September 26th, and the first half of the season wraps up with a trip to Rutgers, which of course is in the middle of a pretty crazy coronavirus outbreak of its own, on October 3rd. Joe, I think this schedule works out okay for Penn State. I see... I think Northwestern's tough, and I think that trip to Indiana is always tricky, and obviously Penn State struggled in the big house, but I see pretty much four wins there for the Lions with obviously the game at Michigan being the one where even though I'm not as sold on Michigan, I did Big Ten, two early Big Ten rankings a couple weeks ago, and I had them a little bit further down than both the betting odds and a lot of our colleagues in the media have them, but Penn State hasn't proven it can win out there, and we don't know if there'll be fans, and we don't know if it'll matter, um, but that's really in the first five games, Joe, the only um, the only hiccup I could see is that trip to Michigan. What, what say you? Yeah, well, you know, I think I think Indiana is a tough out. You know, I mean, Indiana had their best season last year in years. Tom Allen's doing a really good job there. Um, I think that could that could be a tough game. I, I, I definitely a winnable game. Uh, definitely a game they'll be favored in, no question. But I think that's a tough game. You know, Michigan, obviously, that you say Michigan State. You know, new coach, new situation there. Um, so I mean that. That that really should be should be a, a W, and, and Rutgers, God, you know, I mean, that's just like a grease fire there. So I mean, that 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 should be an easy W there. And then you know, coming off the bye, you know, well, uh, I won't I won't step on your toes there. You can go ahead, but Maryland's coming off of that, you know, I mean, that that should be another win right there. So. Yeah, they're looking pretty good, I, I think, in the first yeah, half. Yeah, to me, that Rutgers game is more likely to not happen if they can't get that under control down there than it is for Penn State to lose that game, even if it is at High Point Solution Stadium. One thing I'll note, Rutgers already said it won't play in front of fans this year. That isn't much of a change from last season or any other season in the Big Ten, so no home field advantage there for the Scarlet Knights. <laughs> but, yeah, looking at this board, I do think that Penn State is 4-1 and one at absolute worst heading into its first bye week, which is October 10. Um, and 5-0 and oh certainly could be on the table as well. We'll see how things shake out. Keep in mind, too, that depending on when you're listening to this, Penn State planning on releasing info for season ticket holders about attendance at Beaver Stadium this fall sometime Thursday morning. So you'll want to check us out at PennLive.com slash Penn State Football to figure out what's going on with that. We don't know. The governor's office has not yet said anything about any ruling it or the health department has made about fans in the stands. Sandy Barber speaking to the media back in early July said the hope was that they could accommodate as many season ticket holders as possible. We'll see how that shakes out. They then have a call scheduled with Sandy and a number of athletic department personnel for Thursday afternoon to explain a lot of these decisions and the health and safety protocols they'll have and all of that. All right, we've reached halftime on this week's edition of the Penn Live Penn State Blitz podcast and the Penn Live Penn State Blitz video. If you're listening to the audio version, don't forget you can like, rate, and subscribe. Leave us some feedback. Tell us how much you miss, miss Bob Flounders this week or convert Conversely, wish Joe Herman was on more. Uh, you can do that at Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your music. And then if you're listening to the Penn Live Penn State Blitz video, uh, you can find this video, of course, and all of our archived footage at youtube.com slash all Penn State. All right, Joe Herman, it's third down. I don't know if it's third and short or third and long, but we're going for it anyway. The second half of Penn State's 2020 season as scheduled at the moment. Maryland home October 17th, Iowa home October 24th. A tricky trip to Nebraska, who I don't think is going to be very good this year, but still, to go there on October 31st probably will be a pretty good challenge. We'll see. Ohio State then the big game of the year. Halloween too, Greg. It's Halloween. Say that again. It's Halloween yes, it too. Is. And, uh, you know, a Halloween trip to Lincoln. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think Nebraska is not going to be too scary this year, but we'll see. Um, 
Ohio State, November 7th then at Beaver Stadium, and then Penn State hits another bye. And then that game number 10, Joe, Penn State draws. They're all crossover games across the conference this year. That's at Illinois on November 21st. Let's first talk about these opponents and then talk about how the schedule could change if delays need to happen. Joe, the second half of the schedule here, I think you couldn't ask for a better draw if you're Penn State. You get Iowa and Ohio State at home. You mentioned it in the first half yeah. here that Maryland is uh, – Likely a, a win uh, by double digits, if not more. I was always a tough mm-hmm. out, but they come to Beaver Stadium, Joe. And, I, you know, again, we don't know yeah. if Kinnick Stadium would have been a house of horrors this year because we don't know who's going to allow fans and if they do, how many. But I don't think you're ever going to complain regardless about not having to go to uh, Iowa City and Kinnick Stadium. I know I won't. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, even though I love Kinnick Stadium. I know I love Kinnick Stadium, but, yeah. I mean, I was a different team on the road. Um, you know, Penn State uh, playing at home against, like you said, they draw them and Ohio State uh, at Beaver Stadium. Um, you know, it, it, it certainly it certainly sets up well. Um, I mean, if they get by Michigan in the first half, I mean, it's kind of like, boy, it just rolls out nicely to that Ohio State matchup um, with with you know Iowa as a definite test in between. But but yeah, I agree with you, Greg. It does it does it does shake out pretty well and the Illinois draw is a is a pretty nice uh pretty nice crossover draw for Penn State I thought it was interesting if you look at the uh extra game draws between Penn State Ohio State and Michigan um you know Penn State gets Illinois Ohio State gets Purdue and Michigan gets Northwestern so it it seemed like it was kind of a draw there you know I think uh none of no one really came out with with having to play like a Wisconsin or Minnesota or anything like that. I think the the quality of of opponent is pretty equal across the board for the three teams. Yeah, there is no question about that. Everyone seemed to work out quite okay. All right, let's just quick break down how this schedule wakes, uh, shakes out. Rather, uh, ten games over twelve weeks. Everyone has two buys. All the crossover games between the East and the West are scheduled for Week One and Week Twelve. Everyone has a buy that they could make up games if needed. Uh, the Thanksgiving weekend, November twenty eighth. If they have to push things back, the Big Ten title game, which is now scheduled for December fifth, could happen either December twelfth or December nineteenth. Joe, for all the uncertainties about the pandemic and everything else. It feels to me like they built in as much wiggle room as possible for the need to maybe have a fourth, not, not to not have a forfeit week by being able to move games around and with the buys kind of matching up nicely. Um, you know, obviously chaos will be the name of the game because it's 2020 and that's all we've come to experience. But um, I think they did about as good as they could in terms of making these buys for teams in places where it would make sense to make games up if needed. Hopefully that never happens, but we've seen teams have to shut down workouts, so one can only assume that might happen in season. Big Ten's going to test twice a week from the way the protocol reads, and there'll be different quarantines for, I believe, symptomatic and asymptomatic people, so we'll have to see what that looks like. But All told, um, again, I think they probably could not have done a much better job of setting this up in a way to provide as much flexibility as possible for us to see as many games as possible. Yeah, I agree with you, Greg. I think I think maybe uh, you know, new commissioner Kevin Warren. uh, What a first year it is. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, Really, uh, you have to think that maybe they took a look at Major League Baseball and 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 the shortfalls of their plan and. And saw how um, you know there are going to be bumps in the road. I mean, there's no. I mean, there's literally no chance that this is going to all go off without a hitch. I mean, um, it's just too unpredictable. And uh, you know, laying out the schedule the, the way they did, and and, and having provisions for uh, possible postponements and things like that, um, you know, is is a really smart move. Um, and. and you know, I mean, other conferences have announced that they're going to start later, push it back, and then just play right through, like I believe the Pac-12, yeah. right? So, you know, I was a little surprised to see them starting on time, but then when you see the reasoning behind it um, and the buys and the extra weeks, um, you know, it, it really makes sense. And, you know, who knows if we're going to have a season, but it certainly appears that they're, they're, they're the, this plan uh, – allows you know the best chance for that to happen. yeah and you bring up commissioner kevin warren and yeah what a time for jim delaney to step aside and him to step in yeah. for his first yeah, year right? at the helm um he's been about as forthright as anyone in college athletics about look 
We're going to put yeah. these plans into place, but we're not guaranteeing you anything. If we find that it's not going to be healthy, it's not going to be safe, it's not going to work, we'll just bag it. And he's been very forthright about that. And to that uh, point, he's also been forthright about saying, look, we need to build in as many contingencies as possible. They've done that. And so I think that ultimately – um, you know, they're going to try the best they can. And whether that means they play four games, six games, eight games, hopefully all 10 games, um, you know, they're going to do what they can to get a full season in for everybody. And who knows if there's a college football playoff, who knows if there's bowl games. Um, we just don't know the answers to those questions and probably won't for a while. But everyone's eye will, of course, be on getting to their conference title game for Penn State. That will be the Big Ten title game. They would, of course, be going back there for the first time since 2016, if so. And we'll see how it all shakes out once the uh, first game is, is played. But let's get to this week's uh, Penn Live Penn State Blitz mailbag. Joe, Indiana, Michigan, Rutgers, Nebraska, Illinois are the four, or I'm sorry, five road games this year. We don't know if we'll be able to travel as we have in the past. We'll have to see what the protocols are and things like that. But if we are on the road, Joe, which venue would you most be interested in going to if there's no fans in the stands? So take the environment out of play and put some other factors atop your list. Where do you want to go on that schedule? Uh, I would say Nebraska without question. Um, the, uh, you know, Indiana, oh God, personally a house of horrors for me. I don't know about the team. Yeah, why don't but- you tell that story, Joe? Uh, but in, let's yeah. just say it involves you getting locked inside of uh, yeah. the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, well. I, I, I'm I'm usually the last guy to leave the uh, photo room, and uh, God, I forget. What, I guess it was about four or five years ago. Um, the photo room is 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 on field level. Um, the gate to leave the stadium, where the press box is, is is a level up. So um, you know, I I. I leave the photo room. I go up to the gate I, and I'm trying to get out. All the gates are locked. Uh, I, you know, I get to where the press box elevator is and there's steel gates up and all the steel gates are locked. I can see through them to the elevator, but I can't get out. And the gates are about 10 feet high. Uh, so I, I frantically called you and um, uh, Dave Jones and Flounders. And, and so, so a bunch of reporters came down uh, and uh, I, 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 I Pulled over some trash cans that were, that were there, turned them over so I could climb up on them, and I handed my, hoisted my bag of equipment over the top to some reporters, and then had to actually climb up uh, two garbage cans stacked on top of each other and uh, do my best Spider-Man imitation at getting over. Oh yeah, it was a great time. I, I, I love Bloomington. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much. There's not much. Uh, atmosphere there whether there's fans or not so i'll cross that one off the list michigan again i've said before the most overrated place uh in my opinion uh in the big 10 rutgers you know that at least you you can drive that's about all you can say about that yeah i don't really need to pile on rutgers anymore i guess but nebraska is always an interesting place you know we haven't been out there all that often and it's been a while since the last time we were there um but uh you know it, it, it's it's a it's a really interesting stadium. It's a cool stadium. It's um, I mean the fans are terrific. So I mean without the, the you know without fans being there, it's definitely going to take away some of the allure because uh, you know Nebraska fans are are a breed on their own. They're they're like the nicest, most gentle, passionate fans that you'll ever run into. Yeah, I'm going to go with Illinois. But I would definitely say, only I would because definitely, he gets us close yeah. to Chicago, would, and you know my feelings about Chicago. Oh, yeah, Illinois. I forgot Illinois. I'm sorry. Yeah, Illinois is, you know, it's another one of those kind of nondescript uh, Big Ten venues. Yes, there is no argument to be made there, but on the fact that it is near Chicago cannot be understated. All right, one more for That's you. That's true. That's true. One more for you before we get out of here. This week's edition of the Penn Live Penn State Blitz. Penn State does start camp on Friday, August 7th. Joe, what storyline are you most interested in following? Again, we don't know how we're going to be able to follow camp this year. I can only imagine it'll be lots of Zoom interviews and video updates so we can stay socially distant and all of that. But um, what are you most interested in following? For me, it's the development of the offense and they've talked a lot about being in a position where um, Kurt Sherrock has really been able to install his offense and all the classroom stuff is probably way ahead of schedule because of how much time they've had to meet and that's fine and well but uh, you won't know if the proof is in the pudding until they actually get out on the field and start working together and there's so many new coaches on that side of the ball I just think that um, 
you know, there's a lot to work on for that group this year, and they need to get on the field and maximize the time they have before the opener with Northwestern. Yeah, I, I, that's what that's that's the storyline that I'm most interested in. I'm really looking forward to seeing his offense, um, especially the wide receiver position where, you know, they lose KJ Hamler by far their biggest threat. Um, you know, and and some of these young guys. I mean, Jahan Dotson is a really solid player. Um, Cam Sullivan Brown, we'll see. Daniel George, we'll see. You know, what about John Dunmore? I mean, he's he is he. You know, could he step up and be, um, you know, an X factor in that in that offense? You know, um, it's uh, but the wide receiver position really interests me. I I, I think running back is really solid. I, I think Sean Clifford is is going to have a really solid season. Uh, the line looks as good as it's been in a while. Running back position is really solid. Uh, that scheme is just it, 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 it just really exciting to uh, the prospects of what they can do. But I think they're you know I mean the level of their success will be how how well the wide receivers play. Yeah, I have no disagreements with you there. It's going to be fun to follow, and you will be able to follow it all at PennLive.com slash football. That's it for this week's edition of the Penn State Blitz. Again, don't forget to check back on Thursday. We'll probably know more about what Micah Parsons plans to do by then. We'll see. We'll know a little bit more about how many fans can be in Beaver Stadium. So until next time, that's Joe Hermit. I'm Greg Pickle. And for our wonderful producer, Mark Pines, we will check in with you next week.